Are you struggling with sin? Ah, uh, well, welcome to the wonderful world of being saved. <laughs> uh, there's an old saying that um, goes like this. A Christian is not sinless, sinless perfection. In other words, we're not, we don't uh, stop sinning when you get saved. But a Christian should sin less. So we're not sinless, but we should sin less. Uh, very well said. Uh, when you get saved, when God saves you and the Holy Spirit of God moves into your life, uh, there should definitely be a change in your life. But um, that takes years sometimes. And there are some sins that you will just drop, just boom, done. I don't need to do that anymore. I'm tired of that. That just even vexes me to think of it. But there are other sins, and those sins will hang on for years and years, and you will struggle with it. And just when you think you get clean from it, you'll go right back to it. But how do you fight against that? What's the way to war against the flesh and put the flesh down so that you can have victory over sin? How do you do it? Well, very simple. Revelation chapter 3 talks about um, the Laodiceans, the church of Laodicea, that they're neither hot nor cold, they're lukewarm. And, you know, and uh, they're... You know, they say that they're rich and increased with goods and whatever and have need of nothing. and and uh, But they're actually wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. You know, and, and uh, what does the Lord say? Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Um, the antidote to a life of sin is a life of being zealous. Uh, and that's a really good thing. It can be. But you also have to be careful about being zealous because it can go the opposite direction let me explain what does it mean to be zealous okay being zealous means that you go beyond you know in the military they would say it's above and beyond the call of duty you become very zealous uh, your orders were to take this certain hill your orders were not to um, capture an enemy tank and drive it and towards their base and attack the base and you know do some kind of a crazy thing or whatever else. Um, there's a lot of great soldiers down through history that were, you know, very zealous soldiers. You have uh, Audie Murphy in World War II, Alvin York in World War I, uh, Carlos Hathcock in uh, Vietnam. There's a lot of great men that stand out in the history of America, and they were very zealous. And there was no, you know, fooling around with that. They were zealous men. They were... Um, great soldiers because they went above and beyond the call of duty well as a christian uh how does that work out well if you have a problem with uh, road rage we'll say or speeding or going to the wrong places you get tempted to pull into an adult bookstore or into a bar or some place like that some place where you know you shouldn't be uh be zealous put some uh, bumper stickers on your vehicles put some big magnets on your vehicle with king james bible scriptures on it or you know, links to your favorite uh, YouTube channels. <laughs> I know some of you do, and I appreciate that. Um, but uh, it causes you to be zealous. Uh, it causes you to think about, um, you know, I need to be careful here. Uh, I personally had an issue with road rage and just being a little bit nuts behind the wheel and everything, um, being a bit crazy. And it's helped me quite a bit uh, to have magnets on my vehicle. Because now I have to think, hey, you know what? It says KingJamesVideoMinistries.com on the back of my vehicle. Uh, there are scriptures on my vehicle now. I need to be a little bit more aware of that fact. Okay. Um, what about wearing scriptural, scripture art on your shirt or on your hat or on whatever? Um, yeah, now that's another thing that you need to think about. Hey, I have the verses of scripture on me. I can't pretend that I'm not a Christian. I can't go into the wrong places and be standing in the the aisle that has the pornographic magazines or something just kind of looking at them. No, I have scripture on me. Huh, you know, see how being zealous can help you to fight against sin if you're struggling with it. Um, you know, there are times when, uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, what's another way to be zealous? Uh, giving up uh, movies and music that are not pleasing to the Lord. There are times when you will um, be convicted 
about certain types of music and that music might not be overly bad or evil or something but it's just not helping you in your relationship with the Lord it's not helping you in your walk with the Lord well be zealous get rid of it and you know I've had times where I was really struggling with certain sins and at the time I looked and I said well you know what this music here even though it's not really bad it's not helping me and I want to be zealous and I want to repent and say I'm getting away from this music and I've done that and the Lord blessed it um, later on in life you might come back and say you know what that there was really nothing wrong with that particular song you know something just classical music or traditional bluegrass or something like that but uh, whatever at the time I needed to get rid of that that's fine. Um, all Hollywood movies should be gotten rid of because they're all just garbage. But yeah, I understand that there's some that you can say, well, they're not quite as bad as some of the newer stuff that's come out. I get it. But uh, be zealous, you see. Um, you know, be zealous with uh, your nutrition. I feel really terrible. I feel really sick. And uh, oh, God, please get me out of this. Well, be zealous about eating the right foods. You say, I'm just going to get some junk food here at the store. Is it going to help you in your walk with the Lord? Be zealous, you see? Um, and, I mean, you can go through anything with this. Obviously, video games, you know, people make the argument, well, I play a video game on my iPhone or something. I play Tetris or Scrabble or some kind of a thing. And, you know, you get brethren, they look into things and they'll say, well, you know, the, the history of this is bad and the history of that. You know, Mario Brothers is actually some kind of whatever. Sure, you can make those arguments. Um, uh, you know, well, Brother Brian teaches that if you play video games, you go to hell. I've, I've never taught that. Um, I've said it's a waste of time and you're a loser for playing them. You lose every time you play video games. Um, you say, well, that sounds kind of zealous. <laughs> That's the point. Uh, you say, what about the danger of being zealous? Well, the danger of being zealous is that you can get to a point where the zealous standards are what is the most important thing for you. In other words, you stop making it about Jesus Christ and stop making it about reading the Bible and you take your zealous standards that you have and you start to apply them to other people. Um, street preachers are very famous for doing this. I've known quite a few and um, some of the bigger name street preacher guys and uh, that I've met and I've gone street preaching in the past and everything and I've seen some real pride with that and these guys they're very zealous very zealous but boy they start to make it about this thing of you know if you're not street preaching why aren't you street preaching why aren't you going out there on the street you need to do this and you need to do that well not everybody's called into that all right um, I can't say why aren't you making videos on YouTube huh you know, I make videos. I've made thousands of videos. Why aren't you? Where are your videos at? You know, and this soul winning thing too. You know, that's another one of the big ones. They'll do this, this thing of, uh, when's the last time you led a soul to the Lord, huh? You know, well, where's that at in scripture? Where do you ever see Paul? You know, he comes to the Thessalonians and he says, how many people have you gotten saved since I've been here the last time? You know, uh, I've led hundreds to the Lord. How about you? <laughs> Well, if you're a going out and you're witnessing and preaching the gospel, again, soul winning, we need to get that out of our speech. Um, it's used by the church building people and all that stuff, and I've used it myself, but it's not really correct. He that winneth souls is wise is not referring to preaching the gospel. All right, it's talking about being having a winning personality, winning people over, you know, and, and befriending people. That's what it's talking about. Uh, King Solomon didn't preach the gospel ever once. You know why? Because the gospel wasn't there. All right. Uh, Jesus hadn't come to the earth yet. He hadn't lived and, and died and buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Uh, that wasn't there. So, but <laughs> preaching the gospel to people, if you're really good at witnessing to people and you've actually tell, told people how to get saved and you lead them in a prayer of salvation and show them from the scriptures, and everything else well praise the lord that's great that's wonderful and it's good to be zealous in that but don't make that the standard by which you judge other people okay 
um, well, I don't listen to certain types of music because to me it's a it's an issue that I can't. I, it just it leads to fleshly things and carnal things and whatever else. And I found a brother, and he does listen to the music that I reject. Therefore, I reject that brother. Well, be careful. Be careful. Now, obviously, if the guy's listening to Metallica or Megadeth or I don't even know modern bands. I have no idea. Showing my age here. Um, ACDC or something. Well, that's a problem. You know, you get some guy that claims to be saved and he's listening to music that says that, you know, he's on the highway to hell or something. Well, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, I don't think you want to do that. Um, again, please understand what I'm saying here. Um, be zealous, certainly, but don't let your zealous standards become how you judge other people. You say, well, Brian, you do the same thing. You, you're doing the same thing. Well, I judge people on doctrinal issues. And uh, I have been guilty over the years of um, maybe pushing things a little bit too far, but in terms of some of the standards that I have and whatever else. But uh, I try to keep it about doctrine. And, you know, again, just understand when I'm on this side of the camera and you're on that side watching me, I don't know you personally. I'm not sitting there in your living room. Um, there's a lot of people that watch my ministry and uh, they put nice comments down there in the comment section and they're just as evil and just as wicked as Satan himself. Um, you know, I mean, I got a letter from the Vatican the one time, like I said, and they said, we watch you over here. You know, I think it was a little bit of a veiled uh, threat, if you know what I mean. You know, we're watching you. We know what you're doing. Denlinger, watch your step. Um... Uh, so, not everybody that watches me is saved. Not everybody in the comments section is saved. All right. Uh, so, that's why I'm a little bit zealous sometimes. Um, but please understand the spirit that is behind my preaching. Uh, I'm trying to get people to think. That's the main thing. I grew up in going to churches where the preachers were so ambiguous sometimes that you'd, you leave and you're thinking... I don't even know what he stood for. You know, what, what, what was that sermon all about again? I don't know. You know, I, I mean, most of my upbringing sitting in church, uh, I only remember a few things that were ever said all the years that I went to church growing up. I mean, I was in church every time the doors were open for the first 17 years of my life until I got a job. And, and then I started, they'd say, can you work on Sunday? Yeah, I can work on Sunday, you know, and, and uh, so then I wouldn't be there on Sunday. But before that, and I was dedicated up in front of the church um, as a little baby, a newborn baby. And then I went, I was there every week. And of the hundreds and hundreds of sermons that I heard, I forget most of it um, because the preachers were ambiguous. They just, you know, I don't really even know what the guy stands for here. Is he condemning this or condemning that or whatever and uh, because church buildings are businesses and you can't offend the customers too much because then the tithe starts to go down and and whatever uh, and that's what church buildings are church buildings are a business let's just that's what they are i'm not trying to be insulting here on purpose it's just that's what they are um so be zealous brethren but don't go too far with it all right please be careful with that and there are some standards that I've had in my past that I've backed off on a little bit now. And I say, okay, you know, I mean, I tried for a while to be anti-Christmas. I thought that, that was the right thing to do and whatever. And then I heard some counter arguments and I started to think about it. And I thought, you know, some of my standards that I have here as an anti-Christmas guy, they don't actually line up with the Bible. You know, Jeremiah chapter 10, where it talks about cutting a tree and, and you know, um, that's not a Christmas tree. Uh, and you know, you get these guys and they come out and they say, Oh, it's a Christmas tree. No, it's a carved idol. That's what it's talking about. And when it's decked with gold and silver, that means overlaid with gold and silver. It means that it's covered. It's gilded. It does not mean that they're putting tinsel from Walmart on the thing or something. Okay. That's not there. <laughs> um, so if you're taking a zealous stand, in other words, that's based on a lie, well, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Um, you know, the whole flat earth thing, not to resurrect that one again, but, uh, I have to say it 
a lot of people that get into that stuff, they get very zealous for it. And they're going around and they put all kinds of, you know, put, you know, flat earth stuff on their vehicle or whatever. And uh, they get real zealous for it. Well, I don't think that's something that you should get zealous for. Uh, it's not as cut and dry as most people want to make it out to be. It just simply isn't. But uh, you can watch my studies on that and get my opinion on it. Um, it's not something we should fight over. Definitely. Um, but <laughs> not going to get drawn back into that whole thing again. But the whole point I'm trying to make, brethren, is be zealous. Yes, be zealous. Definitely. Be as zealous as you can be. But don't let the zealousness uh, take away your... Mosquitoes are just wonderful this morning. Um, don't let the um, your zealous standards take away your grace for other people. Okay? You have to be careful of that. So, uh, I hear Luther barking over there. I think my son's up finally here. So, so that's going to be it. Just wanted to make a quick video. Um, if you are struggling with sin, it's a great thing to be zealous. Um, and again, one of the greatest uh, ways to fight against lust is uh, to sing hymns and spiritual songs and things like that. And on that note, to finish this video, I had a friend of the ministry send a hymn book. And from what I'm seeing so far, I think it's going to be my favorite hymn book. I'm currently re reviewing it, going through the whole thing, um, seeing if there's any songs that are left out or whatever else, um, checking lyrics and, and things. But I'm going to be doing a book review on that hymn book in the future. I don't know when, but I'm going to be getting to that and uh, recommending it, I think. <laughs> Again, I need to know some other details, so I'm not going to talk about it right now. But it uh, looks like it's a really good hymn book. So look out for that video coming up in the future. But, um, so, we're going to, I need to get going here and uh, get to the office. It is, let's see what time it is, about uh, three minutes after 6 o'clock a.m. Right there. Uh, started doing my first video this morning at 5 after 5. So, uh, woke up this morning at 329. And I've been up ever since. Uh, praying and... Just uh, finally just said, okay, time to go outside and go for a little walk. So um, please do keep us in your prayers. Uh, and uh, thank you to everybody out there for your support. And we'll see you in the next video.